Good evening, Father Patrick Raymond here, Rector of Church of the Ascension. Bless you for joining us for this Mass on the Feast of the Epiphany. This day has taken turns and been far more troubling than most or any of us would have imagined when we woke this morning. I gather anybody present here also knows of grave troubles in our nation's capital. Uh, there was some discussion this afternoon about whether to even hold this Mass, knowing that the city can become uh, lively with unrest very quickly. Uh, we decided instead to have a scaled-down crew and a Mass. Of course, sadly, no incense, but I trust you'll understand that uh, we're blessed to share this Mass together nonetheless. My sermon for this feast is more of a traditional epiphany message to which some of you will respond, thanks be to God, and others will feel let down. There is a brief mention of our current circumstances. Other than that, I hope that some of you, like me, are looking forward to, to uh, finding our sanctuary here with Christ in this Mass. Bless you.
and are come to worship him. Let us pray. O God, the Son, highest and holiest, you humbled yourself to share our birth and our death. Bring us to shepherd and wise kneel before your most holy cradle, that we may come to sing with your angels your glorious praises in heaven, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leaping of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise, arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. For the coastlands shall wait for me the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your children from far away, their silver and gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. 
Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. 
When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. From time to time, I wonder about the star, the one that the wise men saw at its rising. The one that they took as a sign that a king had been born to the Jews. I again wondered about that star a few weeks ago, having read that Jupiter and Saturn, the two largest planets in our solar system, were to merge in early in the evening of December 21st, the winter solstice. There are those who want astronomy to account for the star of Bethlehem, and who believe that the wise men may have seen and followed this same bright joining of planets, a very rare occurrence prior to a few weeks ago, the last time that this conjunction shone so brightly was March 4th in the year of our Lord, 1226, almost 800 years ago. Whatever celestial light they followed, I wonder how many people knew about it. Of those who knew, how many took time to see it? How many who saw it believed it to be a sign? Even if many or most believed it to be a sign, all but a few left it at that and went home. In retrospect, I'm now disappointed that I wasn't more curious back in December about the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. I don't know what the weather was like that night, but my plans never included stargazing. My indifference makes me wonder if or how often I may miss God-given signs. Do I miss them because I don't look for them? Because I don't know how to look? Or is it just self-absorption? Why do I need a sign from God when I have a smartphone? If I did see a sign, and if it did, I did have an inkling about it, would I be willing to go on a long, hard journey? Knowing it could cost me and take, far, far, take me far, far out of my comfort zone. I wonder. 
We heard in the gospel that when the wise men saw that the star had stopped over the place that the child was, they were overwhelmed with joy. I myself felt joy and laughed out loud when I looked up the original Greek text here. Four separate words are used to convey just how joyful they were. I'm drawn to the translation that says they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. I wonder why the Magi rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Maybe they were just glad to have arrived, like marathon runners crossing the finish line. The journey had had more twists and turns, more bickering and uncertainty, and taken far longer than they'd ever calculated back when it began. Surely they were joyful just to have arrived. But that doesn't fully add up to rejoicing with exceeding great joy, does it? We are clearly meant to see that their exceeding great joy arose from the newborn king, Christ himself, and the Holy Family. I wonder if their great joy is hinted at in a line from The Vessel, a poem by C.K. Williams. He writes of being in a real relationship with God instead of just lonely for him. I wonder if loneliness for God at least partly launched these magi on their journey. I wonder if what brought them such great joy was some inkling here in this Christ child of a real relationship with God. I wonder how many of us and how often we know that joy. Due to today's disturbing and violent events in our nation's capital and elsewhere, I considered cutting joy from this message. But let's remember that these wise men had just come from an audience with a conniving, frightened, and violent ruler. A neighbor and sometime worshiper here at Ascension called me late in the day to say in part, what we've seen today reminds us that Herod is alive and well. I had already been separately thinking that this moment in Matthew's nativity story is his version of that centerpiece of the prologue to John. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not overcome it. Having just left behind defiance, violence, chaos, and self-preservation at all costs, these wise men have just encountered peace with justice on earth. Of course they're joyful. Finally, I wonder why this fantastical story is only found in the Gospel of Matthew. Why did this author include it? Scholars have an easy answer. They tell us that the story supports the main premise of the Gospel. The child born in Bethlehem and sought by these foreign magi was not only king of the Jews, but Lord and Savior of earth, 
heaven and all creation. I wonder, though, if in addition to building a theological case, the author was wondering about you and me. Not by name, of course. And he would never have imagined worship by Zoom. But I wonder if this story is included partly to stir up wonder in us. Wonder about our loneliness for God. Wonder about God-given signs. Wonder about leaving our secure comfort zones for a journey that will lead us to Christ. Wonder arising from finding him and learning the meaning of rejoicing with exceeding great joy. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So I ask your prayers at this time in particular for our nation, for those seeking to restore order in our nation's capital, for a cessation of anger and violence, for a smooth transition in administrations, for our President Donald or Vice President Mike, or President-elect Biden, Vice President-elect Kamala, for all in every branch of government who seek the good of all with transparency and compassion and justice. Join me in prayers as the pandemic apparently continues to worsen with new fears. Pray for those scientific-minded who seek to understand these changes for those entrusted with public policy, for those in uninsured, the unemployed, and all whose lives have been so adversely affected. 
We've been asked to pray for Augie Alonzo, Jim Berger, Ethel Martin, Dean Panetta, Charlene McDougall, David Byerly, Bonnie Joseph, Diane Burnett, Stephen Wallace, Sarah Ponder, Paul Budspon, Taffy Wakey, Bruce Jordan, Charlie Taylor, and Neil. Join me in giving thanks and praying for Elaine Wilson, who celebrates her birthday today, Tamara Rathuri, and Sonia Smith, and on Friday, Elizabeth Weber. We remember the years, minds of Nancy Heyer, Charles Boren, Robert Richard Bolt, Robert T. Brotherton, and Betty Reeves. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and that light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Christ our Savior is born. Let us worship him with the shepherds. Proclaim him with the angels. Seek him with the wise. Offer ourselves to him with Mary and Joseph. And now together pray to our God. That the people of this world may know your redeeming power and love, O Lord. Christ our Savior is born. O oh, oh, come, come, let, let us, us adore him. That the whole church and all faithful people may work for the coming of your kingdom. Christ, our Savior, is born. O oh, come, come, let us adore him. That the light of your presence may scatter the darkness and bring justice and peace to all people. Christ, our Savior, is born. O oh, come, come, let, let us, us adore, adore him. him. That with joy and thanksgiving, our lives may proclaim your grace and glory. Christ, our Savior, is born. O oh, oh, come, come, let, let us, us adore him. That the sick may be comforted, the hungry and homeless fed and sheltered. Christ, our Savior, is born. O oh, oh, come, come, let, let us, us adore, adore him. him. That all prisoners, captives, and those who are oppressed may find freedom in you. Christ, our Savior, is born. O oh, come, come, let, let us, us adore him. him. That all who have died and may be born to new life in you. Christ, our Savior, is born. O oh, oh, come, come, let, let us, us adore him. him. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully, hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we can confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. I ask that we Take to heart and extend our goodwill, faith, and love to others who are
taking part in this Mass, though we are not physically present with them, let us remember all in our communities and nation who are troubled, those we love but from whom we are separated, and now those who see God face to face with exceedingly great joy. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you again for joining us for this Mass. Special blessing and welcome to any of you who are guests or visitors. We hope you'll reach out to us by another means sometime soon if we can answer questions about Church of the Ascension. We'd be blessed to share that time and conversation with you. And I, uh, due to unusual circumstances of this day, I feel compelled to say that I'm determined to find a way to stay on the Zoom call or to have instruction be given afterward to resume it after a short interval so that any who may wish to visit, at least briefly, share their thoughts or concerns about this day may do so. Bless you and thank you.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at your hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name.
pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Anne, her mother, blessed Joseph, blessed Michael, the Archangel, our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Almighty and ever living God. We thank, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ a light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the Holy Begotten at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that Spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. Amen. God, by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be within you, be amongst you, and go forth with you now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.